wanna show you what I know. Break it free from the mainstream, the studio machine. I want it my way. Hi, we're chatting to uh, Michelle Carey, the Senior Programmer of the Melbourne International Film Festival. And uh, Michelle, how are you today? I'm well, thank you, Mike. And yourself? I'm good. Look, uh, Michelle, Melbourne International Film Festival, it seems to come around quick every year. But uh, yourself, how many years have you been working on the uh, festival? This is actually my first year as yep. a senior programmer. Um, last year I worked an accelerator, which yep. is a portion of the festival, but this is my first year, but you know, I've been coming here for about eight years, I guess, ever since I moved to Melbourne. Yeah, and uh, look, what can the audience expect from this year's uh, festival? Oh my gosh, what can you expect? Um, anything you want, it's there. Um, it's an incredibly diverse program. It's, I believe, our biggest program ever. So we have seven venues, 277 films, um, parties, drinks, DJing, in conversation with guests, restaurants, you name it. Yeah, and look, with, with this year's festival, is it slightly shorter than previous years in, in, in length? I, I, I detect that in the uh, dates. Yes, yes, you're right. Last year was 19 days, yep. which was actually part of our tagline last year. And this year we have shortened it to 17 days. So instead of starting on the Wednesday, it starts on the Friday. Yep. And then just continues for the two, uh, three weekends after that, finishing on the Sunday. So it is two days shorter than normal. Was there any particular reason for that or what was the change of uh, shortening? I think we all just felt a bit exhausted by the end. But also we thought, um, let's start with a bang. Let's start with the weekend. Let's start with a Friday night um, rather than starting with a Wednesday before and then having two days and then going in. So it, it was sort of an effort to sort of just contain the uh, festival somewhat a little bit more. But then we've gone and added more um, venues and more films anyway. So it's, it's no less, uh, it's no smaller, but it's two days shorter. Yeah, and and with uh, with this year's festival, uh, you, look when you've been putting together the program and and that, which was uh, the the section that you've uh, proudest about? Which programming section that you personally mm. have uh, enjoyed most putting together? Gosh, that is really tough because um, I work over most of the the program. But I, I think for me, in terms of process, it was the Khan director's fortnight because I had forty years of films to yep. mine through as opposed to just 12 months. So that was really fun. Yeah, and, and with, uh, with the actual programming sections, do you want to talk about some of the, the, the reasons why, um, in particular, the spotlight on Romanian cinema and some of the other choices in this year's program, which are a little bit uh, different from previous years? Mm, absolutely. Well, we like to think that things work organically and that the films themselves will suggest a program, and that's exactly what happened with Romania. I mean, it, it actually ended up being quite late in the game when we decided to do Romania because we just sort of... We're noticing there are lots of really great, strong Romanian films this year, as well as previous years, that these Romanian films just haven't quite got to Melbourne for whatever reason. And we thought we'd do a spotlight on that. So certainly the films that suggested that. Things like Romero, uh, Richard, our executive director, was um, very lucky to meet this charming woman, Julia, last year in Cannes, who's very close friends with Romero and um, is a curator herself. And she said, I'll bring Romero to you. And we're like, oh, we're not going to say no to that. So it's kind of a um, combination of things. Edward Yang, uh, un unfortunately, the reason for that one, uh, one of the reasons is he passed away last yep. year. We wanted to pay tribute. Um, Ausploitation came about because we wanted to do something with ACME in Melbourne, Australian Centre for the Moving Image, and it's um, also came about because of this documentary, Not Quite Hollywood. So there yep. were all sorts of reasons that sort of suggest a program, but um, it's never that we sort of think of an idea and then think of films. It's always the other way. It's always the films that suggest the um, program strand. Yeah, and, and speaking of the opening night film, uh, not quite Hollywood, uh, once again, MIF opening with a documentary, which uh, is kind of unusual with the International Film Festival scene because people normally go for something with A-list attached actors. Mm -hmm. was, was it that this film just stood out that much and that it was an appropriate thing, or what was the, the theory behind uh, bringing, opening the festival with uh, that particular film? Well, it... I mean, last year we opened with the documentary as well, but this year it wasn't a conscious um, decision on Richard's choice to open with a documentary. It just so happened that he saw this docu this film happens to be a documentary, not quite Hollywood, and he just came out of a beaming. He felt 
he just felt elated. He felt like it's a really celebratory kind of film. And he's like, this is the kind of film we want for opening night. Okay, there aren't any A-list international guests attached to it, but there's there's A-list Australians. It's a celebration of Australian cinema over the past 30 years. And it really set the tone nicely for this festival, which actually has quite a lot of genre cinema in it, not just in our exploitation section, but also throughout, you know, we've got George Romero, we've got some pretty sexy, raunchy films, we've got all sorts of things. And it just felt like the perfect opening film. Yeah, and and sp- speaking of uh, George A. Ramiro, it's it's quite a back catalogue of films that you're actually showing, including his most recent film, Diary of the Dead. Um, it, it's interesting, so many zombie films in one program. Um, <laughs> yeah, a record yes. for a film festival. And uh, look, you know, what what can people? What's uh, what's what are they? Is there any special events planned around George's uh, appearance at the the festival? Uh, like a, in conversation with him, so the, all the zombie fans out there can uh, come in and speak or hear from the man himself. Absolutely, zombies, we want you because um, there's certainly going to be in conversation with, which is happening at seven pm on the Sunday, the 27th. So he's here that entire first weekend. For the uh, premiere, the Australian premiere of Diary of the Dead, his latest film that's going to be happening on the Saturday night, we're um, hoping zombies will turn up and welcome George yep. as we leave him up the <laughs> carpet. So, um, yeah, we definitely want zombies out and about on Saturday night, the 26th of July. Oh, that's fantastic. Look, and also, who, who are some of the other guests coming out for this year's uh, festival? Who are, the, who are some of the uh, international filmmakers and local filmmakers mm-hmm. that uh, will be around the uh, for the screenings at the festival? Sure. Uh, well, in terms of not quite Hollywood and the Ausploitation films, uh, we're very lucky to have Brian Trenchard-Smith, who's a um, legendary Australian filmmaker, but has actually been living in America yep. for a long time, as you know. So we're flying him over from the States. So he's going to be around, as is Anthony Ganane, a producer very involved in those films. So they're kind of Aussies, but kind of Americans, uh, quasi-international guests. We've also got Serge Brazon, a French filmmaker who has a film called La France, and he is a mad film fanatic, um, music fanatic. So he's going to be DJing on the Saturday night, the 26th, playing kind of 60s beat music and mod kind of music. That's going to be fun. Uh, we've also got um, the beautiful actress Arta Debroshi, who was in the Dardenne's film Lawn of Silence, which played at Cannes. So she's going to come out and she'll talk to the audience after Lawn of Silence. Oh, who else? We've got so many people. Um, we've got a director of a documentary called Alone in Four Walls. Her name's uh, um, Alexandra Westmeyer. We've got the director of Johnny Mad Dog, Jean-Stéphane Sauvert, a Frenchman. Uh, we've got all sorts of guests. We're still confirming yep. even today, as well as all your local filmmakers and interstaters. It, well, it's going to be a hectic time, as, as it always is. But uh, with the, uh, the selection process for uh, MIF, how many feature films did actually come in to the, the mix, uh, sort of a ballpark figure? Did you sure. have to... Well, it's a combination of sort of unsolicited and, and solicited. In terms of unsolicited, I, I would guess maybe five, six hundred. Yep. And then there's all the films, of course, we see at various film festivals around the world or requests screener DVDs of. So, I mean, I I don't know. It's hard to say. There's quite a few of us in the programming team, but probably up to around near a thousand. Yeah, and and of those of those type of films, what how many films did you have to trawl through to find this year's uh, selection uh, yourself? Yeah, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. Um, I mean, it's kind of an ongoing process. But I reckon maybe two or three hundred. Yeah, and and with with uh, filmmakers, did because this show's geared towards uh, filmmakers out there. But uh, we did did you get any obscure, you know? you know, presentations, the way films were packaged <laughs> up or anything to try to, you know, grab the attention of the programmers this year or any unsolicited bribes of such? <laughs> um, no, unfortunately. It's not welcome that kind of... Uh, I shouldn't say welcome no, bribes, yeah. but um, no, no, it was, it was straight, you know, the, the little disc in the envelope kind of thing. I mean, you know, where, wherever we met... It's funny, like, going to Cannes and parties and that kind of thing is where you often get sort of accosted by these local filmmakers and they sort of give you things that way. Um, so, no, it's fine. Not too much stalking or anything. <laughs> no, it's very quiet these days. And uh, when, when you're... you're... When you are yourself watching films, is there, you know, do you try to create the right atmosphere or is it like a, you know, a kind of a job where you sit down in a room similar to this with the, the big tally on and, uh, and trawl through them or do you try to, you know, watch them in the, the best environment being a, a cinema with an audience? Mm. Oh. I think it's a bit of both. I mean, you don't want to be too academic about these things. I, I do personally prefer to watch films in a cinema, as I think Richard does, and even with an audience is even better, which is why going to international film festivals is best. 
is the best thing. Um, I mean, when watching DVDs, I think, you know, I mean, it's good to take a few notes, just because sometimes in terms of publicity, if you do select that film, it may be the only chance to get to watch it. Yep. You have to try and remember things. But no, I think the important thing is to watch a film as if you're in, in an audience and to enjoy it and really sort of try and engage with it as an audience would, like emotionally, rather than being too intellectual or academic about it. Yeah, and and y yourself, what what's your background, or, or how did you get the gig? The other question, yeah. Oh well, um, I mean, I've been sort of volunteering, doing the hard slog, and sort of various film organisations around Melbourne and also Adelaide, where I'm from, for a long time. And I worked, I guess, in Accelerator last year with the local filmmakers as as part of MIF last year, and um, then so I was going to move to Paris for twelve months. <laughs> So I did that and just thought I was going to slum around for 12 months because I should mention, actually, I used to work at Adelaide Film Festival, yep. which is on every two years. But then um, Richard contacted me late last year saying there's, there was this position available and would I be interested in... Um, much as I love Paris, I mean, I have to say it was pretty hard to say no to. Yeah. I was totally elated and I'm loving it. <laughs> oh, good, good, and 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 look uh, for for the, uh, the 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 festival. Obviously, I know it's hard to 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 pick the films out that uh, you know that that your definite favourites. But do you have mm -hmm. some couple of personal recommendations or films that not not necessarily recommendations, but films that kind of really um, provoked an emotion in you, whether good or bad or, or or something like that, that had a strong, profound effect when you were, walked out of the, the theatre. Is there any particular films that, uh, you know, maybe not the ones, you know, that stand out with the mm. well-known actors or the well-known filmmakers? Mm, absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah, there are a couple for different reasons. A couple I saw in Khan I just thought were just plain weird and mm -hmm. I still can't get out of my head. One of them being a French film called On War, which is um, a two and a half hour film about the pursuit of pleasure. Mm -hmm. A um, couple of really strong documentaries that are quite controversial, such as It's Hard Being Loved by Jerks, a French documentary about the, um, uh, the Prophet Muhammad um, cartoons from Denmark, and also Terror's Advocate, mm -hmm. a French, another French documentary. Um, uh, there's a film I really love, actually, an American indie film called Wendy and Lucy, which is a very quiet film, but I found it profoundly sad. And it's a, it stars Michelle Williams, but that aside, I don't think it's really going to leap out of people. So, but I recommend if people want to see a great film, go see that one. Well, look, uh, thank you very much for your time, Michelle. Looking forward to it.